Hello again fellow Jetty users and this is episode 3 of Logic Switches for Beginners. In this episode we will see uh, the programming I did in the last video uh, for a landing light logic switch actually in action on a model. We'll take a look at using proportional controls with logic switches and we'll use a telemetry control with a logic switch. And fortunately, I have a model which has all three of those in the one model. And so my lovely assistant today is a Carf Eurosport, which I painted in the scheme of the Eurofighter Typhoon from United Kingdom's Royal Air Force 2015 uh, display aircraft. The reason for this particular scheme they did was that 2015 was the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain and they painted this typhoon to represent the Hawker Hurricane of a Flight Lieutenant James Nicholson who won the Victoria Cross during the Battle of Britain and indeed was Fighter Command's only Victoria Cross in the entire Second World War I believe and so it was lovely to see the plane which got nicknamed Gina of course um, so we'll switch that on a bit later because it'll create a lot of background noise with its uh, digital servos buzzing against the weight of the elevons. So what logic switches have we got? Let's dive in and take a look. There's three in this aircraft. There's the gear fail safe which uses the telemetry control. We'll look at that one. There's a brake warning, uh, which we'll look at in just a second. And of course, the lights, which I showed you how to program in the previous version. We'll see them in action in a moment. Brake warning, nice and simple. I use the side slider here as my brake controller. Uh, air brakes. Uh, well, I should say pneumatic brakes don't work particularly proportionally, but uh, I've got a nice proportional valve in the plane. And that's where I've become used to using it with my left finger. Um, and it did occur to me that it could get knocked in flight and switched on. And without realising it, I could come into land and have brakes on. And then, you know, finger goes to the, the brake lever, and but the thing's already locked up wheels as it touches down. Or if I was having a senior moment, I could be trying to taxi and not realise, again, I've knocked the lever, the brakes are on, and wondering, why am I throttling up and it's not moving? Wouldn't it be handy to know uh, if the brakes are on at anything other than idle? Because the only time I should be using the brake is if the engine's at idle. So here's a great candidate for a logic switch. If the throttle is slightly above idle, and if uh, the brake lever is moved slightly on, uh, I'll get a warning. So that's what we did. Uh, we create uh, this, and this is going to give us a nice example of using proportional controls in a logic switch. It's a simple AND switch. P4, throttle stick, P6, the side slider. When they both switch on, the switch will come on, and then, of course, I assign it to uh, an alarm, uh, which uh, I made a custom voice file from. For uh, Let's have a look at how you use a proportional control, because in uh, one of the first videos I said, logic cannot work with proportional numbers. It, it's, it's very simple. It's on or off. And therefore, you have to evaluate the proportional control into an on or off state. And the jetty does that for you quite happily. So we look inside here, go into P4, and you would cycle through the screens because it'll give you different screens. This is the one you want. Uh, by cycling it, it's cleared out my settings, but it's dead easy to set. I move the control to where I physically want it to be when it switches on. And I can press this button here, we'll set the switch to that point. Or I can use the rotary dial to change the switching point. See, I can swing it around. So let's set it to minus 90. And with the control below it, it switches off. With the control just off idle, it switches on. 
If you wanted it the other way round, by the way, in other words, switched on down there and switched off up there, just press Rev. So it'll switch on and then it's off all the way up there. But we want it to come on just up there because remember when the throttle's just above idle and when the brake lever is moved away from brakes off, there we go. So that one's switched on. That's fine. And it's exactly the same with P6, the rotary control. Only this time, P6 moves this away. You see, I've had to reverse it because it'll default to saying this end is on, that end is off. But of course, as you can see with the movement, that's full brakes on, there's brakes off. I need it off at this point, coming on to brakes on there. So we just yeah, used rev to set which side is on, which side is off. Simple and condition, and there we are. So if I leave the throttle at idle, I can operate the brakes quite happily, nothing happens. If I leave the brakes off, I can operate the throttle quite happily. But the throttle's up a bit, I'm flying around, and... Uh, you know, I've accidentally nudged the lever. Don't want to land with the um, brakes on. So this is what happens. Wheel brakes are on. Wheel brakes are on. Wheel brakes are on. And I just have to move the lever back and it's done. I'm coming to land, of course. Throttle to idle. Now I can happily operate the brakes with no warning. So that is how you can use proportional controls in a logic switch. OK, to that one. Now gear fail safe. Let's have a look at this one. Think about what we're trying to see. We're trying to see if the pressure is above the minimum value and I pull the retract switch up, then wheels up. Otherwise, wheels must be down. So if the pressure is below the value or the wheel switch is down, switch, uh, gear goes down. Straightforward enough to set up control number two, switch B, which is my retract switch on the, the far left corner here. Wheels up, switches on, wheels down, switches off. Um, control one comes from a telemetry control. You get to this by, if we say this clear, come down here, set telemetry control, and I've already created the telemetry control, so we'll go and look at that in a moment. Gear fail safe. And uh, I should have taken a note of the values I was using a moment ago, um, but it's switched on. That's okay. We're actually going to really be setting things in the telemetry control rather than here. So this just accepts it as a switch. That'll do fine. We'll come back to it if that's going to cause us a problem. So what is the telemetry control? Come down here, telemetry controls. There's my gear fail safe. So I created a telemetry control, gave it a name so we can find it again in other menus like the logic switches, enabled it, chose my sensor, which is the uh, Jetty M bar, air pressure sensor, type of control, it's being a switch. I only want it to go on or off. Remember, because that is what the logic switch will use. The condition, that X, i.e. the pressure, is greater than 400 kilopascals. And um, I work in pounds per square inch, so 400 kilopascals is about 58 PSI. You just Google convert whatever PSI you're after. Uh, I think I said convert 60 PSI to KPE and then just rounded it down that little bit to 400. Plus or minus nil, duration, immediate. Uh, this is worth doing. Default, 100%. What does that mean? Well, I used to be puzzled by when the typhoon was flying around. From time to time, the, the gear would suddenly drop at random and then go back up. I could not work out what was going on here. And it turns out that what it is, of course, is if the telemetry back channel uh, drops out or can't be received for some reason, and this would happen at, typically at jet meets more than anywhere else, where the low power of the telemetry channel could get swamped by all the other transmissions going on. And, of course, the telemetry control said, well, I'm not receiving anything, switch off. By saying that, giving it a default value, you can say, if you're not receiving telemetry, default on, plus 100%. So, ah, oh, that's great. 
when the now when I'm flying around, if there's a momentary telemetry dropouts, doesn't matter. The transmitter substitutes a 100% value for it. Okay. So having created it, it's on at the moment because it's not receiving any telemetry from the model. So of course it's producing its default value. We'll go back up to our logical switches, gear fail safe, and so. The telemetry control, because it's not receiving anything, is producing a default value of 1. And if I were to move my retract switch up, it goes on. That, therefore, that would allow me to put the wheels up. If either of these goes off, the wheels would come down. How do they do that? Well, remember, we looked in the previous episode at using the output from the logic switch. So in my functions assignment, the gear is assigned to the logic switch. So that, that takes control of it. If you leave it on the gear switch, then the logic switch can't have any effect on it. Right, let's have a look at the beast in action. There will now be quite a bit of background noise due to the, the humming of the, the servos. So stand by. <clears throat> Okay, first of all, let's take a look at... Can we get it in focus? There we are. Uh, I'm, I'll go a little bit off axis because the lights are pretty bright, but what you're looking at is the light on the uh, leg there. Landing lights off. There we go. And now if I switch the retracts up, it will go off immediately. But when I switch the retracts down, it comes back on. And I can now operate the manual switch to switch them off. off. There we go. So that's the example in action of the switch we made in the previous episode. Uh, we've seen the throttle, or we've heard the throttle and the brake warning. So the other one is the gear failsafe. Okay, let's have a look from this angle. Get back in focus. Goody good. Now, <clears throat> I will cycle the gear, which will use up air pressure, until it fails. I don't know if you heard it, the transmitter said gear pressure low, gear pressure low, gear pressure low at the same time that it put the gear down because I programmed it to uh, also in the alarms menu to give me a, a variable warning that that's happening so I know exactly why the wheels have come down. Uh, although I might get around to reprogramming this to give the uh, spoken warning just a, a few PSI above the point at which it puts the wheels down there um, just so I know it's about to happen rather than see it before I get the variable warning. Okie doke, so there you are. That's uh, an example in action from what we did in the last episode of the light switch. We've done an example of proportional controls in logic switches, and we've done an example of the telemetry control in a logic switch. See you for the next episode.